basically just an infographic of the United States that shows some of the more recent uh, mass shootings in the United States. Um, I'm sure we're all familiar with this. Uh, in the little red boxes, the number of people that were killed in those incidents. Um, you know, and this goes up until 2017, uh, but doesn't include the most recent mass shooting that occurred in Florida, in which 17 high school students were killed. Um, and this sort of uh, creates a little cycle. Um, there's a mass shooting. There's an outpouring of grief and outrage. There's domination of the news cycle and calls for action. And then time passes, and not much happens. And then there's a mass shooting again. This is just a map of mass shootings in the United States in the year 2017. Um, there are a couple different definitions of mass shooting. Um, in one, a mass shooting is an event only if four or more persons are killed in a single incident. And by that definition, there were 24 mass shootings and 118 deaths in the year 2017. In another definition, uh, is only a mass shooting if four or more persons are shot or killed in that incident. And by that more liberal definition, there were 346 mass shootings, accounting for 437 deaths in 2017. But what does this look like in the overall burden of gun violence in the United States? Well, every single day, about 318 people are shot in the United States, of whom 96 will die, and of those who die, about 34 are murders and about 60 are suicides. So about one-third of the deaths that occur on a daily basis are from homicides and about two-thirds are from suicides. What does this look like marched out over a year? Well, every year in the United States, 116,000 people are shot of whom 35,000 will die, and of those, 12,000 are murders, and about 22,000 are suicides. This is a graph that's produced by the CDC. I know it doesn't project that well, but uh, just pay attention to the colors. On the y-axis here, basically marking from 1 to 10 are the ranks for death uh, in the United States. And on the x-axis, there are different groups uh, by age. So on the far left, there's less than 1, and on the far right, there's greater than 65. The red boxes represent homicide. So as you can see, from ages 1 to 44, homicide is always in the top five causes of death in the United States. And the green boxes are suicide. So you can see that suicide is also a very important cause of death in the United States um, from basically the ages of 10 to 14 until all the way up to 55 to 64. So there's some good news. Um, relative to other countries, uh, we are not the most violent. Uh, this is an infographic that shows that we have 3.85 uh, gun deaths for 100,000 people a year, and this is from 2016. But there are other far more violent countries. Uh, up at the top is El Salvador, which had about 40 gun deaths per 100,000 in 2016. But there's also bad news. Um, relative to peer developed countries, uh, we're a high outlier. So here we are again with 3.85 deaths per 100,000. Uh, and look at other countries like Japan with 0 0.04 deaths per 100,000, and Germany with 0.12 deaths per 100,000. How does this look through time? Well, in the 1990s, uh, gun deaths per 100,000 people in the United States went down, uh, but those numbers have been relatively stable over the last 15 years. Uh, the, yellow number, or the yellow line there represents gun suicides, while the blue line represents gun homicides. And where are these deaths occurring? Uh, so this is a map of the United States uh, with the darker shadings representing more gun deaths. So this is for homicide, and you can see that there are some states in the Midwest and the Southeast where they tend to have higher rates than other states. And the same is true with suicides. You can see some states in the, in the Northwest and in the Midwest that tend to have higher rates than others. But if you look at all cause, you can basically see that there's no area of the United States that spared these deaths. Uh, even in the lowest instances, it, it ranges between three and nine per 100,000 in the, in the lowest states. So taking it back to the burden of mass shootings, last year in 2017, there were 22,000 deaths in the United States from suicide there were 15,000 from homicide and 437 from mass shootings. And so far in 2018, there have been 2,700 deaths in the United States, 4,600 shootings. Just to give you a perspective of what this looks like from the, from the perspective of a provider who takes care of these patients, I was on call at Valentine's uh, last February, um, and I just wanted to give you a screenshot of my pager. So this is over a 36-hour period spanning from uh, the 13th to the 14th. Um, and the first one is trauma alert, gunshot wound, estimated time of arrival now. The next one is gunshot wound, estimated time of arrival now, drop off by police. Uh, there's a trauma response, and then a little further down, there's a cluster of three gunshot wounds, all of which came in, in, the next 10 to, in within a 10 to 15 minute period, all dropped off by police, followed by one further gunshot wound. So here we have six gunshot wounds in about 36 hours. Um, and unfortunately, that's not that atypical. It's, it's not so much that this would stick in my memory for being a, a particularly high outlier for the number of gunshot wounds. 
Um, but, but what did sort of surprise me uh, was that some of it ended up in the local papers the next day because that doesn't always happen. Um, and that uh, reminded me of a quote uh, by a colleague of mine, John Pryor, who was a military surgeon. Um, and this is from a piece he wrote in a, in a letter to the Washington Post in 2007 entitled The War in West Philadelphia. More young men are killed each day in the streets of America than in the worst days of carnage and loss in Iraq. There is a war at home raging every day, filling our trauma centers with so many wounded children that it sometimes makes Baghdad seem like a quiet city in Iowa. And he went on to say that in the winter of 2000, 10 people were lined up and shot execution style. Seven died and three were critical. You haven't heard about this tragedy because it happened to inner city poor people in a crack house in Philadelphia. Imagine for a moment if this had occurred in a suburban shopping mall or if a marine unit in Iraq had been involved. There would be shock, outrage, 24-hour news coverage, Senate hearings, and a new color of ribbon to wear. That double standard, that triage of compassion and empathy, is why the war on the streets continues unabated. Thank you.